Rennie, the analyzer. How have you enjoyed the gig? I've, lo I've loved it, Keith. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, being part of footy again. It's uh, been a while since I've been involved uh, at this level. So uh, to be in the box and uh, commenting on it's been great fun. Gee, it's been a hard year to analyse in a way because in terms of the local sides, it was all about how they lost. Uh, yeah, it was, and probably in a way that's one of the easier things to do is uh, look at uh, reasons why teams lost. But um, you know, working out a team's strength, certainly well, coming into the finals, I think there's uh, some very intriguing, uh, and you'd have to do a little bit of research to try and work out uh, where some of the teams are going to get it over the others. And uh, I really can't wait for the finals. I think it's uh, it's going to be some of the best. Uh, quality of teams in the finals I really think it goes right down to the bottom uh, with teams that could possibly win against the top four. So unlike other years where you can say oh well six, seven and eight they can say goodbye yeah. you reckon that people like well West Coast, Essendon, Carlton they, you, see, you see them actually being able to shake them up. Well they are and uh, Sydney beat Geelong at home and uh, St Kilda have been there for the last two years so you can't write them off. So and they've, had a, they've had a sort of season in two halves haven't they? They're, they're yeah. still coming. It, it took a long time uh, for them to get their, themselves moving but uh, I mean what a great effort to get where they have so they've got some they've got some momentum uh, Keith. So, so if it isn't the big two who's yeah. your smoky? Uh, I don't think that they'll get there but I love Sydney I, I, lo I love their I love the fact that they are they're, they're like a, a, a they're out here somewhere all the rest of the sides are over here because the way that they play is, uh, I mean, it takes a lot of discipline. Makes it, makes it. It's, a, it's just a different style of footy. They've been playing finals footy all year, in a way. All year, and so you know, are they? I think they're prepared yeah. to play against these better sides. So the fact that they got over Geelong, maybe there's a bit of confidence that they might have got out of that that could carry them through. Uh, I mean, a smoky. I'm putting Swans as a smoky. Uh, Geelong, though, to win the flag. So, so the Geelong Collingwood game. What did you take out of that freakish affair? Um, uh, Geelong came off the Sydney match, maybe, maybe looking to, you know, put out, put out a bit of a warning. And there was a, there was a few things said in the media that they thought they were more skillful than Collingwood, and I think Collingwood were certainly looking towards next week. So, uh, if you know what uh, proud sides are like after they get beaten, well then uh, Collingwood should come out with steam uh, this weekend. I, I think that everyone thinks that West Coast will beat them, but I would not write out Collingwood. I think that um, uh, Mick Mouldhouse prepares the side as well as any in the AFL, and I think that it's just going to be a great game of football. And the Geelong Hawthorne is just going to be unbelievable as well. Let's go back to the, the local sides. What did you take out of the year for both sides? Uh, that physically, uh, probably both sides uh, aren't up to scratch in regards to being able to compete against the best in the competition. Certainly from Adelaide's point of view, structurally, uh, the way that they play the game has uh, been superseded and uh, opposition sides have found uh, you know, the key to beating Adelaide and, and, and their inability to adapt is, is, uh, it means that they've got a lot of work to do. Uh, Port, on the other hand, uh, Look, I don't think they're that far away from each other at the moment. Uh, I know that uh, four wins is four wins, uh, you know, between the two. But where they sit on the ladder, I, I don't think it's a, a real. Um, I think both sides are, are, are a long way back, and they're going to have to do a lot of work to, to get themselves up. And that's not just to make the finals, but to think that they could push for the for the big one eventually. Yeah. As a Crow supporter, I've got to say um, it was staggering. In some to see some days how it looked like they hadn't even turned up. H how do you explain that? I, I always believe that the players vote uh, with their actions on on the you know what's happening within the club, and um, uh, you know there there, there wasn't uh, there, there was there was no passion, and there was no. Uh, you know, no desperation uh, in, in a lot of the games, and um, you know the results. Uh, what, it, what it's been, it is what it is, and uh, you know they've got an opportunity now to really rejuvenate that football club and, and uh, really, uh, you know, put everything in place to bring it up uh, up to scratch again. Matt Primus, uh, I mean, they didn't turn up for him some days either. So can he find something uh, without maybe? Well, maybe he's got to have changes around him as well. I, I think 
in a footy club, sometimes things need to happen a certain way to be able to get past it. Uh, you can't get past these things immediately. It's got to evolve. Uh, you, you can't rush kids getting games. They can only get them week by week. And uh, I actually thought that the way that Port Adelaide finished the season was uh, an, an enormous fillip uh, for that whole young group that are now committed to the club uh, to go on and, and have something to build for. Uh, they've had a terrible year PR-wise. It's, it, it's not been a great uh, year of football, but if they can get everything right in the off-season and, uh, you know, Stop, stop the innuendo and stop the discussions about you know anything bar the football and get there competitive and get them fit and, and get them out on park. Then um, you know hopefully they can climb up as well. Got a brown light? Oh, I'm going Ablett. Oh, not Juddy. No, I, I just I know I know that they they only won three games, but I mean he he was he was getting 40 touches sometimes a game. Like he was just unbe an unbelievable year of football. And, How about uh, that first quarter here at Adelaide? Well, I look at that game, and <laughs> even though they lost, he, he he was clearly the best player on the field. And I think that there would be a numerous amount of games where he was clearly the best player, even though they didn't win. So. I'm tipping that he's going to poll really well. Whether he wins it or not, who knows? And we don't know yet. It's the 5 AA Champions Night. Uh, in some ways, is this maybe uh, a little easier to pick than some years? For the Crows, for instance? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lay down, isn't it? Well, it looks like it. What about Port? Uh, yeah, a little bit more even, but... Um, oh, do they divide it into two, do they? Port and Port and oh, 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 we, we have a club champion for both, don't we? We have a club champion for both. No, no just the one. We only end up with one. Well, it's it's one medal. So, so one, we end up with one at the end of the night. So it yeah. sounds like yeah, I would say Thompson yeah. would be impossible to beat. I sheer mean, weight of touches. Uh, sheer weight of consistency. Yeah, I don't think any other player has um, uh, been as consistent as Scott Thompson yeah. this year. So you're looking forward to next year already, or do you need a break? I'm going to, I'm going to need a bit of a relief from footy. <laughs> uh, I, I have really enjoyed it. I, I, I go right through with uh, the radio, Sunday Mail, and also yeah. Channel 10 um, with the finals. And really, you know, I'm, I, I've been asked to do the lead-up to the Carlton-Essendon game. So, you know, to really get into the, um, the finals footy is what it's all about. Look for well, we're looking forward to the analyzer going right through the grand final. Good Thanks, mate.